Going back into the mists of time, the very, very first bike we reviewed on Adventure Bike TV was the CCM GP450 Adventure. But even now, thinking back to two years ago, I had some reservations about it. With a single cylinder engine, this bike takes a little getting used to if you're coming from the relative luxury of bikes like the BMW GS or a Yamaha Super Tenere. The bike is, it, it's very vibey and you really notice this at motorway speeds. In fact, you might even wonder if you made a mistake buying this bike. But then you get on some twisty roads and you start to feel better. Eventually, you will find a green lane then suddenly it all makes sense. And I've really, really enjoyed riding it. I think if you're gonna go on a world tour and you're happy to go at 60 miles an hour, but you want the flexibility to be able to ride the bike off road, it's the perfect tool for the job. So for me, on those days when I am happy to go at a slightly more sedate pace, and I wanna take the bike off road, there would definitely be a space for that bike in my garage. The model that we reviewed two years ago was actually a prototype. So what I'm hoping is that with their production models, some if not all the issues have now been addressed. And actually they've now got three models. You've got the basic adventure, you've got an S, and you've also got an RS. So, what does RS stand for? Well, actually, I think it stands for Rally Sport, and as it happens, I'm driving an Audi RS3. But for me, RS really means, it means power, and it means performance, and it means handling, and just that something extra special that you don't get in the run of the mill car. It gets faster and faster. <laughs> That's what RS means. It means putting a grin in your face. So what makes the RS model different to the other two? Well, you get WP suspension at the front, you get some extra detailing over the bike, but then you also get something which I think has the potential to be an absolute winner. You get two sets of wheels. You'll get your adventure wheels and you'll get a set of supermoto wheels. So in theory, you're getting two bikes for the price of one. And let's not forget, you get a nice little bit of smoky red color on it as well. It is great to see a UK-based adventure riding machine that is not sitting on its laurels. CCM have now got three versions of their BMW 450 40 horsepower, 130 kilo machine for you to choose from the Adventure, the S and the RS. The Adventure model allows the ostrich leg riders to get an extra 60mm of seat height or you can go for the factory lowered option that'll take you down 100mm. Perfect for Tom the producer. The S is positioned as ready for the next big trip with full luggage, cush driven rear wheel set, heavy due to motor and bash guards, brush guards, front accessory frame for your gadgets adjustable touring screen mount and a rear lifting strap. The Adventure tips the price scales at under seven and a half grand now and the S at a shade under nine. But today we're testing the RS model which truly is two bikes in one. For this model you'll get a WP fork upgrade, brush guards, a nifty stainless steel compact number plate holder and a style pack. But most importantly you'll have two sets of wheels, Supermoto and Adventure. And you know what? I think CCM may well have struck a little vein of gold here. Nine and a half grand for a very good looking Adventure and Supermoto bike. What is not to like? We've got the Supermoto wheels on the bike at the moment. So the first bit of our test is going to be out on the tarmac. If 
you want the huge torque and the mind-blowing horsepower of a big adventure bike, then of course you're not going to get that from a 130 kilo 40 horsepower 450. But 40 horsepower in this package is a world of fun out on the dry country roads of South Wales. Treat the clutch with care and respect though, because at times it can be a little unforgiving. But there is huge amounts of grin factor to be had with this bike. And don't forget, it is British. So what is it like to ride when you sling a pair of Supermoto wheels onto what was originally pitched as an adventure bike? Well, the result was quite a surprise. The smaller wheels and the rotars really do make it feel like a different bike. It turns quicker, it turns much more smoothly, and it's much, much easier to get lent over into the corners. In contrast to the prototype we tested a couple of years ago, this little machine seemed happy at the upper end of speed limits, and I could imagine knocking out adventure distances on it. Now, the time has come to swap the Supermoto wheels for the off-road stroke adventure wheels. And in theory, this is something that I should be able to do entirely by myself. But as it's not my bike, and frustratingly, the bike doesn't come with a centre stand, so it's balanced slightly precariously on the metal mule pannier, I may just ask Tom to come in every now and then just to steady up the back of the bike. We're going to do a time-lapse photography on this because it's going to be very boring watching me change the wheels over. But we've got the, uh, the faithful GoPro just to watch me cock things up as I go through. Tom actually set me a challenge of changing both wheels in less than 20 minutes. And in a proper adventure style with only a hard luggage case to stand the bike up on. Could I do it? Yes, I could! So we have watched the front tyre change. Marginally better than the proverbial paint drying, but you really don't need to see the rest. <laughs> Twenty-three minutes. Twenty-three minutes. So twenty-three minutes, and in all honesty, I was expecting that to take a lot longer. The front was just marginally fiddly, but actually the rear took only took about four or five minutes. So it sort of proves that you can change the wheels over really quickly on this. And uh, if it's your bike, I'm sure you can do it by yourself. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother! With the bigger wheels and knobbly tyres, this bike is perfectly at home off the tarmac. It didn't take long to find a little bit of air with it, and as I got the feel of the grip and the standard suspension settings, I was getting a little bit more. Usually more of a captain cautious off-road, I found that the power delivery was just right for giving confidence in the power slides and to race through the muddy water. I heard a Dakar rider talking recently about their KTM and about how you need to be a great rider to get the best out of it. 
Well, the CCM was the opposite. It was simply making me feel like a king. I hope the level of fun I was having out there on the motocross track really came across in the film because I was having a stupendous well of a time. And I think that says a lot about this bike. It was a bit like riding my EXC 55 and that's a compliment. This natural home is out there on the trails, on the tracks and indeed on a motocross track. But I also had a well of a time on the road with the supermoto wheels and tyres. But on Adventure Bike TV we like to talk about the good things and things that we like not so much. And there's a couple. The engine is much better than it used to be. However, it's been put together by CCM now, but it's still an old engine. And the combination of that engine and the clutch to me is still a bit clunky, even though I accept that the BMW clutch is uber reliable. And the price, nine and a half grand does get you two bikes. And I do agree with that. It absolutely gets you two bikes, but it also takes you into the territory of the Honda Africa Twin. For example, it's not quite there, but it's getting into that territory. So it does give you other choices. But if your starting point is a small engine bike, then absolutely I can see where this would take you. When we were in the Audi RS at the start of the show, I said that that car put a smile on my face. And I would say this RS has definitely put a smile on my face today. But of course, the big question is, would I have one of these in my garage? And I think in many ways, my answer hasn't changed much from a couple of years ago. I do think it's a better bike and you get two bikes for the price of one. If your starting point was, I want a small capacity bike and you ride a lot off road, but you want the option to go on longer journeys and have fun on tarmac as well, then absolutely, I can see why this might well be in your garage.